On the 3rd of April, 1973, nearly two years after Salyut 1 first launch, Proton K carrying Salyut 2 would launch from Baikonur Cosmodrome. But unlike Salyut 1, Salyut 2 had a secret mission. In fact, the name Salyut 2 was just to conceal its true purpose, being the first of the Almaz military stations. Almaz, a Russian word for diamond, was a top secret military space station program which began in the early 60s. Unlike the regular Salyut space stations, which are given the designations DOS or Russian for the long term orbital station, Almaz stations were designated as OPS or orbital piloted station. Salyut 2 would be designated as OPS 1. Intended to be space military outposts, the Almaz space stations were equipped with rapid-fire cannons, specifically a modified 23mm Richter derived from the tail guns of Tu-22 bombers. Salyut 2 was placed in a low Earth orbit along with the spent third stage of the Proton rocket which launched it. Three days later, due to pressure changes in the tanks, that spent third stage exploded, which resulted in a cloud of debris, which unfortunately followed a similar trajectory to Salyut 2. Ten days later, the debris struck Salyut, which damaged the hull and depressurized the craft. It also tore off the solar panels, disabling the space station from generating any power. By May 13, Salyut 2's orbit decayed and the destroyed space station re-entered Earth on May 28 over the Pacific Ocean. This was a second failure in a row for the Salyut program, as in the previous year in 1972, the supposed civilian successor to Salyut 1, DOS-2, failed to reach orbit after the Proton-K second stage fail. The failures were not over for Salyut though, as on May 11th, a few days before Salyut 2 re-entered, DOS-3 launched, but due to errors with the flight control system, the station drained its own attitude control fuel and became uncontrollable. Because Western radars had already detected the launch, and to avoid any further humiliation, the Soviets disguised the launch as Cosmos 557, so it seemed like just some random satellite. It burnt up in the atmosphere a week later. A few days after the S-3's failed launch, on the other side of the world, the United States finally launched their Skylab space station. A few days after that, the station's first crew, Skylab 2, arrived at the station. When they undocked and returned to Earth, the crew became the first occupants of a space station to return home safely. Unlike the tragedy of Soyuz 11, where the crew was killed due to the depressurization of their craft during re-entry. A year later, on June 25, 1974, a second attempt to launch an Almaz space station was made, Salyut 3, designated as OPS-2. Like Salyut 2, it was called Salyut 3 to hide its military identity, but this time, the launch was more successful and Sally 3 wasn't destroyed like its predecessor. On orbit, Sally 3 became the first space station to maintain its constant orientation relative to Earth's surface. Though despite its military side being hidden, it didn't stop Western observers from getting suspicions, like with the low orbit of Sally 3 at around 200 kilometers above sea level, crews being chosen from the Soviet Air Force, and the use of military radio frequencies. The first crewed mission to Salyut 3, Soyuz 14, launched on July 3, carried cosmonauts Pavel Popovich and Yuri Atiuchin. Soyuz 14 would use the second generation of Soyuz spacecraft, the Soyuz 7KT. The redesign to the Soyuz was made in the wake of the aforementioned Soyuz 11 tragedy. Major changes included the reduced crew accommodation from three cosmonauts to two, extra life support systems in place of the third cosmonaut, and crews now needing to wear the new Sokol space suit, which acts as a rescue suit in an accidental depressurization of the spacecraft. One more major change was the omission of the solar panels and in place, whip antennas. 
This means that the Soyuz now relied on the batteries which provided enough power for two days of standalone flight. The Soyuz would then recharge at the space station. In case of mission failures like docking problems, the crew was forced to power off everything except communications and life support systems until they could return back to Earth. The previous two missions, Soyuz's 12 and 13, were test flights of the 7KT. Soyuz 14 would be the model's first flight to a space station, and thus, a day after its launch, Soyuz 14 docked with Salyut 3. Popovich and Artyukhin would test the suitability of Salyut 3 as a crewed military reconnaissance platform and also the Almad space station systems themselves. Other activities included experiments on human health in orbit, the testing of a water purification system, and of course, unreported military activities. Soyuz 14 would undock on July 19 for a safe landing in Kazakhstan. The crew also left enough supplies for the next crew the last six months. Yet, when the Soyuz 15 crew of Gennady Sarafanov and Lev Diomin launched on August 26th and rendezvoused with the Salyut 3 space station, the craft would fail to dock after the Igla docking system malfunctioned. Due to the limited battery life of the Soyuz, they deorbited and landed two days after launch, some 40 kilometers southwest of Selinograd, which is modern day Nur Sultan in Kazakhstan. Although the Soyuz 7KT was intended to be an improvement of the previous Soyuzes, Soyuz 15 exposed many of its design flaws, like its lack of reserve propellant and electrical power for more docking attempts. Furthermore, the IGLA automatic docking system needed improvements of its own. All of these improvements could not be done during Salyut 3's operational lifespan, and thus Salyut 3 would no longer receive any more crews. By the end of Salyut 3's mission, it is said that the guns on the Almaz station mentioned earlier were remotely tested. Any crew tests of the gun were ruled out due to potential shaking of the station. On January 25th, 1975, the Salyut 3 space station was deorbited over the Pacific Ocean and destroyed by burning up in the atmosphere. By then, the next station of the Salyut program Salute 4 had been sent to orbit. <laughs>